morning again. I don't think I have the words to convey how great it is to be with all of you today as we get Brooks School's 97th year started here in Ashburn Chapel. The excitement of opening day has not lost one bit of its luster for me through the years, and I attribute that feeling to the energy all of you bring to school and one another after what I hope were great summers all around. It is such a joy and lift and thrill to come together in this space, new and returning students and faculty members alike, with what feel like unlimited possibilities in front of us. I was in a meeting with this year's new faculty members just under two weeks ago, and Ms. Hanlon asked all of us to talk about something we were excited about when looking ahead to this school year. You know what I talked about? This chapel, being here and together for the first time and feeling enthusiasm and excitement at every turn, precisely what I have felt as all of you made your way in this morning. On this day, the first and only day of our one and only year together, it feels to me like there is nothing we can't do. We also begin school together today on these 270 exquisite acres of land around us that we are deeply privileged to be stewarding. This has not always been true, of course, and it is both important and appropriate. With so much enjoyment ahead on this particular piece of the earth to share our land acknowledgement. Namely, at Brooks School, we live and learn on land once of the Penacook people, and we acknowledge their enduring presence. This chapel is named after Frank D. Ashburn, the school's founding headmaster, who served in that role from 1927 to 1973, 46 extraordinary years, which is hard to believe. There is a photograph and large portrait of Mr. Ashburn on the walls of the entryway to the building, both taken or painted of him in what was his study in the head of school's residence where I live with my family, which for those of us who are new is right across Main Street from here, straight out the door. This chapel did not come online until 1930 during the school's fourth year of existence, but since then, Brooks School students and faculty members have been gathering here to begin school years every single September at about this time. There is no other space on this campus, not one, that every living Brooksian has spent time in. I love that about this building. Like the school, it has evolved over time, but its size, its intimacy, its intentionally somewhat uncomfortable pews, and the feeling we have when in this space are quintessentially Brooks School. When I think about where our work at fostering belonging for all who are part of this community ought to emanate from, I think of Ashburn Chapel. To me, this is the hub of Brooks School community life. Now my hunch is that not too many of you entered this morning thinking to yourselves, wow, I really can't wait to hear what Mr. Packard has to say in his talk. We all have a lot in our minds today. The questions always far outweigh the answers when a school year begins, and that can keep us preoccupied with what's next as opposed to what's now. So with an invitation to stay in the now, coupled with permission to drift if you find your mind tugging you in some number of other directions, I want to share a little bit about why I think this space is the hub of our communal life and why being here twice every week is so important. In a way that will not likely surprise any returning students, I think it is important today and on most days to be mindful of the school's mission, not a motto, not a saying, not a tagline, not a brand, a mission. Mission statements should inspire. Mission statements should aspire. And mission statements should be built to last 100 years. I believe we have such a mission. At Brooks School, we seek to provide the most meaningful educational experience our students will have in their lives. It's a lofty goal. It's inspirational. 
It's aspirational and built to last. This mission is our school's North Star. It's what we aim for. It's what we hope the class of 2024 will be on their way to feeling once they've earned diplomas and received them on prize day in late May. It's what we hope all of you will feel throughout your lives when you recall the lasting meaning of time spent here with one another, how being here holds in your heart and head. It is also important to note and acknowledge that our school's mission is not neat and tidy. It's reasonable to hear that mission and think to yourself, what does that mission about meaning really mean? Indeed, it is my hope that we all have that thought in ongoing ways. How do we, how do I, find a route and path and program and experience that yields deep and lasting meaning, that stays with us in important ways for the rest of our lives? Our mission is meant to be wrestled with, grappled with, thought about, poked, prodded, and pushed. It is a lens we do well to look through all the time and in everything we do. Its strength lies in what its versatility opens to us, collectively and individually. It does not answer many questions, but it allows and encourages us to ask better ones when we think about where we want our school to go. This brings me back to Ashburn Chapel and my notion that we are now in our school's hub of community life, what Mr. Ashburn called the heart of the school. Like our mission, a lot of the time we spend together in this space is not always neat and tidy. Our school was founded in the Episcopal tradition and there was every expectation that Mr. Ashburn, like all of his contemporaries at the time, leading Episcopal schools of this sort would be ordained. He refused. And for a brief period of time, there was some concern that Brooks School wouldn't even get off the ground. His position was pretty controversial. The school did get off the ground, thankfully, and I happen to believe that Mr. Ashburn's resolve in wanting to steer clear of ordination and chart his own course was one of the many great gifts he bestowed upon his and our school. His decision allowed the school a measure of independence. He wanted for it. And this has served us well over the decades. We are both a school with roots in the Episcopal tradition and a school positioned to be nimble, responsive, and attentive to who we have become over time, to who we are continuing to become and this balance isn't always easy. I would even go so far as to say that Mr. Ashburn set our school on a course for meaning and belonging. Not always a neat and tidy course, but Brooks School's course. In Brooks at 50, which Mr. Ashburn wrote after his retirement on the occasion of the school's 50th anniversary, he reflected on chapel gatherings in this way, and I quote, for 30 years, there would be few, if any, chapel troubles. It was something I said was the heart of the school and which was so accepted, except for a few lone dissenters who grumbled about compulsion and lack of meaning in the services. In a way, it was highly unorthodox because I took nearly all the services, including the main one on Sunday, which for a long time came in mid-morning. It was unorthodox because I was not ordained in broke rubrics wantonly. But if this sometimes bothered me mildly, it did not bother the boys. Since numerous bishops and other church authorities knew what I was doing, and with a few rare exceptions made no objections, I continued along my heretical ways." End quote. From the beginning, this was our school's space, first and foremost. And while the form and format and frequency of gatherings here in Ashburn Chapel have changed over time, we have no plans to return to the mid-morning service on Sunday, by the way. I believe the time we spend together here is pointed in the same direction as it was when Mr. Ashburn set the course more than 90 years ago. 
We come here twice a week to pursue our mission together, to pursue belonging together, to pursue community together, to know one another in ways we simply would not if this space did not exist. We come here twice a week to make time and space for voices in this community to be heard. We come here twice a week to be both connected to what we have been and in touch with who we are. We come here twice a week because being together is important to us. Along the way, the more we are able to be here, to be present, to be attentive, to be respectful, to be appreciative, and to be in the now and not in the next, the more we will draw from the time we spend together. Perhaps not in ways that immediately resonate all the time or resonate at all at other times, but always in ways that are shared and often in ways that hold and in ways that contribute to providing the most meaningful educational experience you will have in your life. In December of 1930, Mr. Ashburn presided over the dedication of this chapel, not yet named for him, and shared some remarks with those who attended. He thanked a wide range of people, spoke about the importance of the chapel along with its purpose, and shared what might be my favorite quote from him through all 46 years he served as headmaster. He said, and I quote, as I told the boys the other night when talking about today, I have great hopes for this little chapel because as the years go by, I can see great dreams gather in it. To me, this place at this moment is trembling with the future, end quote. As we ready ourselves to head out the doors and into this year so full of promise and possibility, do so certain that you are attending a school that cares about you and is invested in your success. We believe in every one of you and how exciting it will be to see your dreams and accomplishments added to the many that have come before you. Have a great start. Thank you.